out here in one of our oldest walnut trials, uh, Sierra Gold Nurseries recently retired some of our bare root farming ground and converted it to walnut production. Uh, and we decided that the best thing to do within that walnut production was to really kind of trial some of our own products. So out here we have all three UC released rootstocks. So we have VX211, we have Latch, and we have RX1, all clonally produced and grown as bare root trees. Uh, and this is probably the largest trial with these varieties in the state in the, in the sense of them all having equal numbers. There's about a thousand trees each. Uh, and we're here in the sixth leaf. The trees have grown pretty well. We tried to follow as closely as possible the latest recommendations from the UC as far as uh, using a pressure bomb for deficit irrigation and minimal or no pruning. And yeah, we've had pretty good yields. Uh, I think we've averaged about a cumulative nine tons to the acre through the sixth leaf and last year we got around three tons the acre so and we've been picking up some differences between the rootstocks um, so far the highest yielding and the largest tree in the trial has been rx1 uh, this is a normal you know soil typical of our neck of the woods it's pretty well drained uh, pretty good water holding capacity uh, the only significant issue we've had here is some chloride from the well uh, and RX1 has seemed to display a little more chloride symptoms in terms of having leaves that are a little bit browner and later in the fall but it has not seemed to slow it down at all and like I said it's the highest yielding and the largest tree in the trial. Uh, Vlach is pretty close behind. Uh, almost as big and almost as high yields and VX211 has kind of been lagging behind and uh, one of the things that we've been noticing with VX211 is that even though it seems to be a very vigorous root stock uh, when you grow when you graft the scion onto it it kind of seems to slow down a little bit so we're wondering we don't know what the cause of that is but at least in this trial it's been behind the other two uh, other interesting things that we've picked up uh, differences in crown gall. All walnut varieties can get crown gall at this point. There's none of them that are immune uh, and it doesn't seem to matter how you propagate them in the sense of containerized or container going to bare root trees. They'll all get some, they'll much, get much less than seed does, but they'll all get a little bit. So, and we're starting to pick out differences between the clones. So in this trial behind us, and these are bare root trees from clonally produced in our tissue culture lab rootstocks. Uh, the RX1 has about a half a percent crown gall at six leaf. The VX211 has about two percent crown gall. And the Vlach is coming in at six and a half percent crown gall. So we're starting to see real big differences in the varieties in these trials. And again, the take home from here is. If we were going to plant something again, we'd probably plant most likely RX1 because it's the biggest and it gives us the best yield with the lowest crown gall. And even in a scenario where we thought it might be one of the worst because of the chlorides, it hasn't seemed to slow it down at all. So behind me, this is another one of our production walnut orchards. Uh, this one's a little younger than our oldest one but it's, uh, it's been farmed similarly uh, using deficit irrigation and no prune techniques. Uh, the varieties all Chandler on RX1, uh, but we did a big trial in here where we compared sort of our production methods. So tissue culture propagated rootstock is primarily uh, done to have uniformity in the rootstock and have sort of superior genetics in the rootstock, but also to help prevent some of the problems that are associated with seed production, which the number one problem is usually considered to be crown gall. So this behind us is a trial of two different kinds of propagation methods, but we're always using the most advanced technology. So we're using tissue culture produced rootstocks, 
which should get, be getting much less crown gall than seeded production. So what we're comparing behind us is what we call a micro budded tree, which simply means that the plant never saw dirt until it was planted here but it was planted as a finished tree. So some of you are familiar with planting rootstocks and budding in the field. Well, these were budded in a container and planted behind us as a budded finished tree. Uh, the other trees were planted as from bare root production, but they're still tissue culture produced rootstock. So we're trying to compare if there, see if there'd be any differences between crown gall or yield percentages or anything like that. But the variety is all the same, it's Chandler on RX1. What we found was pretty interesting. So at, we're in the fifth leaf now, and in the fifth leaf, the micro-grafted, which if you'll remember are the trees that were produced entirely in a container, have come into production slightly later than the bare root trees. So. We're at about 75% of cumulative production now through the fifth leaf. Last year they were off only about uh, 5%, but the year before they were off 50%. And so they're, so they're slowly catching up, uh, but they did lag behind early production. And they're also bigger. As far as crown gall percentages, they're almost exactly the same. I, we had seven crown galls in the micro buds and 11 crown galls in the June buds out of uh, 2,000 trees. So roughly a half a percent either way you do it, but the only difference we saw thus far was in the yield and in the size. And the micro buds were a little bit behind on the yield and a little bit bigger, and that's holding up through the fifth leaf. So we're in the same orchard that we were just showing you where the micro buds and the June buds are. Uh, but inside of that trial, we also planted a small one acre trial with some new genetics, uh, mostly from the university, but also from some private breeding companies. There's been some interesting results. It's through the fifth leaf uh, and we found that there's been some differences in yield. Not many of the new varieties seem to be very promising for yield, except for this one behind me. This is Grizzly, a new clonal release from a private breeding company. Uh, and it seems to be doing quite well. It's the largest tree in the trial and the highest yielding. It's pretty close, pretty closely compared to Vlach, uh, about that size and the amount of yield and pretty close behind it is RX1. Um, the only trees that are bigger in the trial are the micrographed RX1, which are a little bigger than the Grizzly, but as we said before, those ones kind of had lower yields to come into. So we'll sort of see how things turn out here the next year, but we're pretty excited about this promising new variety. Uh, the other interesting thing is, of course, there's VX211 in here, and there's also Paradox Seedling. Uh, VX211 is, again, a little significantly behind in terms of yield. And there's the Paradox Seed, which I mentioned, which is lagging everything in yield and has about 50% crown gall in this trial. We've got just a ton of information out of all these trials, and it's been really exciting for us, and we hope that you guys learn something from this too.